So if you're a podcaster and you've got several episodes under your belt, you're finding your voice, you're finding your audience, and you're thinking, all right, I am ready to monetize. Well, I have got seven tips for you, and these are no BS tips. They're gonna help you monetize, and I can tell you that I have tried six of the seven, and I'll give my input on one of the seven that my co-hosts have tried and found success with, and I'm sure you've heard about it. But anyway, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into it. What is up, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel, and if you are new here, welcome. Now, as I said in the intro there, if you are a podcaster, you've got some episodes, you're finding your voice and your audience, and you know what's going on, and you're ready to monetize, you're probably thinking, all right, first and foremost, I'm thinking advertising and sponsorship. Well, you are correct there. And let me tell you that there are a lot of businesses and brands that advertise on podcasts. I'm sure you have heard them all if you are consuming podcasts like many of us are. And I think even in this economic time, you're gonna find more brands looking at podcasting because with budgets shrinking and them not being able to get on that higher tier of television and the like, podcasting is gonna be a way for them to still reach an audience on their budget, but it also helps you monetize your podcast and get something that is equitable for both of you. Now, when we talk about advertising and sponsorship and podcasting, you may hear things like, well, we need you to have 50,000 downloads per episode, not for the entirety of the podcast, but per episode before we would advertise with you. Now, some of that is true, and especially for some of the larger networks, they will be looking at that. So if there's a third party involved, meaning if there is someone that is negotiating with that brand and with you, a lot of times that threshold of 50,000 downloads is what they require. However, that's not always the case. And, and like I said, in my experience, we have done this with less than 50,000 downloads per episode. So there are some networks to think about and Podglomerate is one of them, just as an example. I'm not saying to go to Podglomerate, but just using that as a reference point, there are networks out there of podcasters that have all gotten together and have decided, you know what, there's some great content. We don't have 50,000 downloads per episode, but you know what, this is just a great group of shows and we want to help elevate each other. And so when you're involved in a network, I'm not necessarily recommending be a, being a part of a network, but what I will tell you is that it can be helpful because that can allow you to get more advertising buy-in because you might have brands and businesses to say like, all right, well, if I can get on multiple shows within this network, then I'm willing to spend a little bit more money. And then of course that's spread around the shows. But let's just say, okay, you are on your own and you want to reach out to the brand or business on your own and that's totally fine. What I will tell you is that there is a CPM, so a cost per thousand download rate of anywhere between 15 and $20. So 15 and $20 per thousand downloads. But don't get discouraged because I've got some thoughts here. So the thing with advertising and sponsorship, and I also did a video that I will link up where I did more customized ads, and it's a longer video, but it goes into some detail on what we did to work with brands that helped us stay on our own brand, but also helped shed some light on the brand and give a little bit more personalization to it. And like I said, I'll link that up. What you can actually offer an advertiser or sponsor is something like a package deal where you have the podcast and so you can do a pre-roll or a mid-roll or an out-roll and you can charge per uh, each roll if you want or put it together in a package to do something like a pre-roll and a mid-roll or even a mid-roll and an out-roll and then if you have your website set up for your podcast where you put your show notes in, you could also set up a link to that brand's website or product or service, and that can also allow them to get some access to your community. And also too, if you have uh, an active social media profile, whether it's Instagram or Twitter or even a YouTube channel, that's also another way that you can offer your advertiser more access to your community and more opportunities to get in those ears and in some cases, the eyeballs. And what I will tell you is that if you are using a podcast host like Anchor, well, Anchor actually has that built in. So if you want to participate in that advertising component of your show, well, you can have access to that and then get connected with advertisers or sponsors that are aligned with your show, your audience, and then you can turn that on, toggle that on, and be able to get some of those advertising dollars 
and that's all through Anchor, and that's already set up. So they've negotiated for you, they've worked that out, and then they will just put those ads in your show, and you, of course, in return, will get that money to help continue to support this endeavor. And then working down the list here, affiliate marketing is also a great way to do it. Now, working with brands directly, if a brand is already set up for affiliates where you can do like an advertising package with them, and then they might even offer you a custom code to uh, link up into the description of your podcast or your show notes or whatever, and then your audience clicks on those links and goes to their platform and they might convert to something. Regardless, you may get a commission off of that, whether it's the number of clicks or if they convert uh, to a paid customer. So it's a great way to think about offering value to your audience and it's no additional cost to them. And using Amazon affiliates, it's a way that I actually can monetize some of my platforms, especially this YouTube channel, and talking about the gear, the tech that I use, that I trust, and that I'm recommending to my audience, and they click on those links, it costs them nothing to do it, and then it allows the creator to get a small chunk of revenue to continue to create that content. Now, of course, if you're a professional or some type of expert, or you really know what you're talking about, something else to think about is a product, and a product that has a low point of entry. Because here's the thing, let's say that you have a business-focused podcast or a finance-focused podcast or photography or some type of art or music, and yes, we can all go to YouTube just like on this video and learn about something for pretty much free. It's just an exchange of time. However, for those of you that are really connecting with a creator out there, someone who does have a podcast, and let's say that they have a business checklist, or let's say that they have an, uh, they're an attorney and they have a very simple contract template or a CPA and they have a very simple Excel spreadsheet or budget template that you could use that maybe you pay a small amount for. So creating those products at a very low entry point, and yes, you can Google a lot of this stuff, you can go on YouTube and learn these things, but if you really trust this individual and you wanna support them, thinking about just a few dollars here and there to purchase their product could be a great way to support the channel, but then also get something in return. And thinking about what your podcast is about, what are some things, what are some, what is some additional value that you can offer to your audience that they may be willing to make a very small purchase in? I'm not talking about products that cost thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm just talking about something that, that allows someone to give you some type of financial support, but then there is a currency exchange there and they think, all right, well, if I'm paying for it, I'm definitely gonna use this, but it's also going to a creator that I really like and trust. Now, something that you might not be thinking about, and this is something that I have made the lion's share of my revenue from, and that is consulting. So with my podcasts and the YouTube channels and a lot of the stuff that I do as a creative, but also as an entrepreneur, I've had people reach out to me because they're already connected to me in some way. They've watched me, they've listened to me, and they feel like they've hung out with me and they already know me. So they wanna hire me for something that they need a problem solved. And for my entrepreneurial background and my business acumen, talking about finance, or even some of the healthcare stuff that I do as an expert there, I've had people reach out to me needing help with something and willing to pay me as a consultant to help them with that problem. Now, you have probably heard of Patreon, and this is the one that I haven't used personally, but my co-hosts have. So you've got a podcast, maybe you have a YouTube channel, maybe you have some other platforms, maybe you have something in addition to where you can offer some more value to your audience. So with Patreon, people can sign up and commit a small dollar amount to you. And I know that I've seen a lot of people say like, for a cup of coffee a month or a cup of coffee a week, you can help support this channel and help this creative endeavor and I can continue to produce these podcasts. And Patreon can be a great platform. I haven't used it personally, but I know there are a lot of creators out there. And with the economic climate right now, as of this video being recorded, I realize that 
there's not a lot of disposable income. So that might not be an option for you. But what I will say is that if you decide to go the Patreon route, I would try to figure out something in addition that you can offer an audience member for investing in you, for committing that amount of money, whatever amount that is, and it can be a very small amount. Just try to find something that is equitable on both sides here. And of course, like I said, and doesn't put you out so that you can continue to create. And of course, lastly, what I re wanna recommend is collabs. And we've had situations where there are people out there that let's say they had a YouTube channel or they were really good at webinars or really good at just like public speaking and they had a, a presence and we had our podcast and we had an audience there and we've been able to come together and help provide more value to a brand by having this person do those webinars and doing a great job of engaging an audience behind the scenes. And then we were the front end with our podcast and YouTube channels and our social media presence where we were able to then engage our audience and what was going on with that brand as part of the ad role. But that collab collectively allowed us to monetize a lot more than if we were to do that alone. So collaboration, doing collabs with other podcasters and other creators out there can be a great way to also monetize your podcasts. All right, so hopefully you found these tips helpful and something that you can take action on. What are some ways that you've tried to monetize your podcast or have you actually had some success monetizing your podcast? I would love to hear from you as always. I really appreciate your time and attention on this one. You go keep creating, you go do those things that matter. I'm gonna keep creating here and providing you with more value. And until next time, Go do the things, keep rocking the faces, and I'll catch you on the next one.